All right, so we'll move ahead with our uh, fourth session for the day, hosted by Chennai Chapter. And uh, we have a wonderful panel here. And Ashwarya is going to be uh, able to moderate it. And uh, yeah, before we start the event, I would like to thank our founding sponsor, Innovation Roots, um, which is a leading consulting and training service provider, helping organizations to achieve and pioneers of niche publishing services and is well known for content collaboration with global thought leaders, authors, and creators. For more information, please visit www.innovationroots.com. I would also like to thank our uh, sponsor, Jile, which is a product offering from Tata Consultancy Services Limited. It is a purely cloud-based enterprise agile planning tool along with DevOps capabilities. Uh, enterprises can use Jile to adopt the Jile practices or scale across multiple Scrum and Kanban teams using enterprise scaling frameworks such as SAFE, Discipline the Jile, Less and More. You can try out Jile for free for up to 20 users for one year by signing up at Jile.io. Or you can also reach out to us for any inquiries or exclusive product demo. Uh, request everybody to check out the Jile page on a Jile Network India website for more information. And, uh, yes, so now proceeding with our panel discussion, over to you, Ashwarya. Thank you, Shreya. Good afternoon. Hello, everyone. A warm welcome and very good afternoon. I'm Aishwarya Balasupramalyan. I've started my uh, professional stint as a business analyst. And uh, I've spent more than a decade uh, working across banking space. Uh, so I've worked in some of the pointers like uh, ANZ and SEB. I wanted to explore and extend my capabilities um, into the banking space. That's when I decided to make a shift to the product side of the world. I joined Tagit and uh, today I'm working as a senior product manager and I'm product owner managing the digital banking product lines. So on the personal front, uh, I'm Madit. I'm based out of Chennai. And I have two sons, uh, two boys, basically, who keeps me running on my toes, a six-year-old and a newborn. I'm passionate about being part of community. I'm a co-member in WIP, Women in, in, Women in um, uh, India, uh, product uh, professional forum. And uh, she won community, uh, community to uplift other working professionals and also be part of uh, ANI, the uh, Chennai chapter. I'm glad to be moderating today's uh, panel discussion. I would like to call our panelists for today's discussion, Monica and Sashi, to introduce themselves. Uh, over to you, Monica. Uh, thanks, Ashwarya. So, uh, hey everyone, uh, I'm Monica. Uh, I've been working with products for the last uh, almost seven years now. And I've worked across multiple domains like uh, healthcare, retail, and I'm currently working on a manufacturing product. Um, I've been practicing on China throughout all these years, and I'm always looking for opportunities to improve my craft. Uh, that's one of the main reasons I signed up to participate uh, uh, with the Agile uh, Network. Um, on the personal front, I grew up in Sydney, and I moved to Chennai a couple of years ago after getting married. I love to write and I love to travel. Uh, I recently started trekking and went on my first seven-day trek in the Himalayas uh, right before COVID uh, hit us. So uh, I'm really desperately waiting for all this to sort of uh, end so that I can go back on those adventures again. Thanks, Ashwarya. Back. Thank you, Monica. Um, Sashi, uh, I'll pass the virtual mic to you to introduce yourself. Sashi, I was talking on mute. Uh, am I good now? Able to hear me? Yeah, yeah. Yes, okay. loud and clear. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Aishwarya. Uh, so uh, I'm Sashi, uh, based out of Chennai, uh, basically from Chennai. So I, I have 20 plus of year, years of experience in predominantly IT industry, infrastructure side. Uh, 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 for from the agile, so uh, I have completed the agile Kanban train the trainer session in 2018. I also completed uh, PSM one in uh, 2019. So post that, I've not done any certification. So that's that's an added advantage. Nothing else other than that. So predominantly into Kanban, uh, 
uh, have done some internal works for my organization. So, and going on, that should. Uh, apart from that, in my personal life, so I'm an athlete, uh, do some internal trainings for me and my kiddos, nothing other than that. And uh, also a passion photographer. So it's a hobby. So to make myself uh, keeping out of my uh, stress, so I do that. Uh, back to you, Aishwarya. Thank you, Sashi. Wonderful to know about you and Monica. So today uh, we are going to discuss on an interesting topic. I would say a much needed one uh, in this new normal. Has remote work led to information overload? Uh, well, remote working has been quite welcome and uh, appreciated in the initial days as many felt it was highly productive, right? Because we had people thought uh, working from home could have bring in a lot of uh, work-life balance and saved a lot of time uh, in commutation to work. So, but as the time goes, many people uh, started complaining about one particular thing in common, uh, which is nothing but overwhelming information. People started getting into meetings, uh, discussions all the time throughout the day around the clock. So a simple coffee chat discussion is now turned into an hour long meeting, isn't it? So at the end result, people digest too little and apply that back at work. So we are going to slice and dice on this particular topic with our panel members today. So let's, all, let's get on with the discussion. So I would like to start with you, Sashi. So what do you think that could cause the information overload in remote working? Sashi, we can't hear you. Okay, I'm sorry. Is it okay now? Yeah, it's fine. It's good. <laughs> okay some network issue sorry for that so as you, as you said rightly said it's a great question and to start with uh, as you rightly said uh, remote work was very happy when we started the the covid situation it was bad however remote work people were happy and they they just enjoyed for a couple of months i think it's not more than that we all started to hate that uh, so as 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 uh, information overload when we speak about so it is more about uh, when when we when we say it's a routine job so it's easy for us to do it without any uh, challenges however when it when it comes to a dynamic environment where we have to engage with multiple teams multiple informations gathering and sharing and kind of reporting when it comes to we have a lot of problems the the reason behind uh, uh, as per my understanding is you you when you when you request for information you get either uh, irrelevant information or overloaded information or the the information itself is missing what we wanted so uh, it it's it's a huge task when it comes to information and predominantly when we get it we 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 started to stress ourselves and get into a lot of nitty gritties so uh, that's that's what we wanted to make sure that when when at the end of this session we we like to know more about it right so we we in turn uh, have uh, challenges in explaining and we wanted to make sure that it is in line with what we wanted so that's that's the uh, idea or thought from my side uh, Anything else, uh, 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 we will come up with in the down the line. Thanks, Aishwarya. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Sashi. I think uh, one good point that you made is processing of the information, right? Because processing of information, I feel it's going to be uh, too much at the end of the day as you get a lot of information every and you'll be attending uh, multiple meetings continuously. So in continuity of that, um, I have a question for you, Monica. So uh, what do you think uh, about the consequences of information overload? We talked about, we also agree that there's an information overload, but what are the consequences of that? Uh, right, thanks, Ashwara. So um, I personally believe that uh, this whole thing about information overload is not something new. Uh, I'm sure it existed even before the lockdown when we worked together in an office environment. Uh, it's just that now in the current situa situation, 
it's getting a lot more aggravated and overwhelming, and hence it's super important to talk about it and to take steps to address it. Uh, so what I've observed is that uh, in most cases, this over communication um, is actually well intended and it's done by design. Uh, so we all miss uh, sitting across the same table or discussing about what's going on in office. Uh, what's happening with people who are not in your region or outside of the team, selecting the them. All of them are things that are missing currently. And as individuals and, and officers are also taking steps to correct it or to help the students by organizing a lot of these forums, uh, which often, like, although it's well intended, um, it often goes wrong if it's not executed well. And I think that is what's causing a lot of these issues. So finally, it affects two ideas, right? I think um, it affects it on an individual, individual level uh, because uh, the work that we either need to do for our team or things that we have planned to do for our own person, all of this will get affected if there's too much noise and development communication that we need to cast on a daily basis. We will end up spending a lot of time trying to sort of comb through all of this and piece together the information. So there's a lot of time that goes over there and a lot of uh, uh, headspace that is allocated to this whole problem. And as a consequence, it also affects the whole team's performance because uh, just the way you are struggling with it, every other individual in the team is going to the same way. So uh, it affects the whole team's performance also collectively. And of uh, course, we all know that uh, the last one year we've all been working extended hours. Um, unfortunately, instead of productivity going up, it's not really improved a lot. And yes, in the next few months, there were talks about Teams are performing exceptionally well, but I think that's slowly uh, coming down with everyone getting bought up. Uh, I think this is mainly due to this very problem that we're discussing. Uh, it can be very stressful and impact your confidence if you're not able to address it quickly and effectively. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, good point, uh, Monica, when it comes to, you know, um, how to handle this information, right, and the consequences that you ri uh, rightly pointed out. But uh, are there any ways that how can we avoid and manage information overload? Hey, hey, hey yes. sorry, Aishwarya and Monica. Monica, uh, I think your was a little feeble. Uh, so people have just uh, uh, not able to hear you properly. Can you just come a little closer, please? Yes, is it better? Yeah, fine. To Much better. Yeah. Uh, so back to your question, Ashwarya. Uh, yes, there are many ways in which we can manage this. I think one of the most important things uh, is to first realize that it is happening. So the ability to identify that we are at the receiving and giving end of a lot of this irrelevant uh, communication and information uh, is basically uh, half the battle plan. Uh, once we are able to put our finger on where things are going on, we can then take corrective steps. Uh, so once we realize that we need to be more cognizant in the way we are processing information or what are we putting out there for other people to consume, I think some of the things that I personally follow that helps me to, uh, to manage this efficiently is uh, one is to set daily and sort of weekly goals. Uh, so being very clear on what we want to achieve for a certain time period. Uh, so this helps me be very receptive to any sort of information that sort of allows me uh, to move towards these goals and it also helps me uh, weed out certain things like meetings or emails or any other kind of communication that are either distracting or not very productive. So that really helps me a lot. Um, another practice that I've started following these days is to uh, make it a habit uh, every morning or every couple of days to clean up my calendar. So I'll go through that day's calendar. Uh, look at meetings that I need to be part of and uh, accept and decline the ones, uh, decline meetings accordingly. So any meetings that I feel uh, is not going to help me or any meeting where I am not going to be able to contribute much, I instantly decline. And that really helps me plan and organize my day better and often then I'm also able to end my day earlier because of that. So that is also something that has helped me and a lot of people that I've uh, worked with is also helping me. Um, and speaking about meetings, I think it's also very important to avoid really lengthy meetings. So lengthy meetings are usually a consequence of not having an agenda, not being very clear on what are we expecting out of this whole discussion, not having the right sort of people in it. Um, so all of this sort of causes meetings to go run into like 45 minutes, one hour, sometimes even longer. And uh, most of the time people are not even clued into what's going on. So that's not really effective. It's always better to avoid that. Uh, 
um, another thing that the team has been practicing is to follow four working hours for the team. So not just having shorter meetings, but we are also trying to avoid having meetings, let's say, for a certain set of hours, like let's say between um, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. We avoid any kind of meetings unless it's super urgent or something. Uh, there are no planned meetings. This helps people to sort of focus on their work for like at least four to five hours at a stretch. Uh, that helps them be more productive. Uh, it helps them cut down on distraction. That that can be helpful. Um, also, to be mindful of all the challenges of communications. I think when lockdown came and we all started working from home, uh, we sort of went on an overnight creating like different channels of communication. So you, you already have your email and your office uh, chat group. Now you're also easily reachable on, let's say, WhatsApp and phone. And there really are no boundaries left. And that is also adding to a lot of noise and a lot of stress. So it's always very important to be able to say no and, uh, you know, just be not. Um, if, if there is a particular channel that is adding to the news, just you know, don't don't participate in it or just stay out. That's really, that's that's helpful. And um, another thing is to just get feedback. So if uh, if you feel that you're being asked to join multiple meetings but you're not able to contribute or you're not able to get much out of it, you can very just be upfront about it and give feedback. Uh, that helps the organizer also understand that they need to be a little more mindful in whom they're adding to the event and whom they're not adding to the event. And uh, chances are a lot of other people also feel that a particular meeting or particular uh, uh, email or whatever is just adding to noise and it's not very really relevant to them. And they're just not speaking up about it. So the more they see others speak up about it, then they will be a problem. And that can also make this problem. That's a great point, uh, Monica. I think one particular thing which I liked and I would like to hear more about that is just like the meeting. I think many people in the call can even resonate uh, with that point because uh, we all end up in attending meetings for a hour long or more than it extends the schedule time, right? So uh, this is a very common uh, problem that every one of us are going through these days. So do you have any kind of an hygiene rules or best practices that to be followed while setting up the meetings and what are the do's and don'ts and whoever is going to attend the meeting, what are the things that they need to be prepared of? So can you just some, you know, share your views or what are you, you've been practicing um, uh, the points that you can uh, share with us, uh, Monica? Uh, sure. Right. So one of the things I make sure when I'm setting a meeting or even if I'm attending another meeting is to always have a clear agenda and sort of expected outcomes. So everyone should be very clear on why that meeting is being set. So always asking yourself a question that is this meeting needed and is this something that can be handled using online communication? Uh, that itself helps to cut down on the number of meetings. Once you feel that no, uh, a meeting is absolutely required, then having a clear agenda and expected outcomes and having somebody to facilitate the meeting to ensure that you are uh, sticking to the agenda, you're not derailing, you're not digressing, you are sort of working towards those outcomes, it's it's very helpful. Um, also uh, helps the team not go down the rabbit hole. It's, it's, it's a very uh, common tendency that a lot of people come together and start talking about things and that enthusiasm you just sort of uh, uh, derail and you start talking about something in detail, but that may not even be very helpful in sort of achieving the goal of that meeting. So it's always, um, it's always important to be very mindful of what you're talking about and if it's really uh, effective or not. Uh, another thing is to make sure that you're inviting the right set of people uh, to the meeting. Uh, sometimes you're inviting too many people, half the people are not interested, it's it's not the, the, the topic is not relevant to them, so they're all zoning out. Such things is not very uh, it's not really very helpful to anybody. So always make sure that you know exactly who you're inviting and whether they will have something to contribute or something to take away from the meeting. If not, then it's probably just better to make a list of all your, uh, or just note down the main decisions or key outcomes of a meeting and pass it on to, pass it on to others in an offline way. That's usually a lot better than inviting everyone to meet. Um, also to be very respectful of people's time while creating and sending invites, uh, make sure that you are, it is within their working hours, you're not creating a meeting too late in the day or too early in the day. Uh, especially if people are working across time zone. So just general um, 
um, just courtesy, just to be to respect other people's time and stick to stick to the time. If you set a meeting for 10 a.m., be there at 10 a.m. All that really helps. Um, and of course, whatever can be communicated offline, please do so. And uh, these days, you can also record meetings. Uh, sometimes it's helpful, sometimes it's not. So take a judgment call. Uh, if you think recording meetings can be helpful to other people later on, go ahead and that, that also helps. Yeah, uh, thank you, Monica. So I think uh, well, uh, nicely summed up all the things that we should be following as an IG rules. Um, one thing which is uh, coming very popular these days is no meeting day. That uh, could be one of the options that many organizations are trying to adopt to, uh, because just to stay focused without any uh, meetings, this could bring a lot more productive and also kind of giving a self time for all the individuals. So one particular thing, what I personally follow is I follow a scheduled time to check on my mails and uh, or any of the alerts that is coming from different uh, communication channels. So without responding to everything and things that come that could avoid distraction, you know, and help me to stay focused. So we talked a lot about, uh, you know, self-discipline. And uh, so one thing that comes to my mind is like how to avoid droning into these informations. So how can a team, uh, you know, they can stay focused without any distractions. So let's hear from Sashi. Uh, what are your thoughts around that? Uh, how can you make the team stay focused without any distractions around? Hey, th thanks, Aisharya. That's, that's one good question. So, because when it comes to team or self, so we need to we need to make sure that we are focused so that our productivity is good. So, in in recent times, yeah, uh, as we are doing work from home, uh, predominantly our uh, our distractions are coming from either our mobiles or our uh, home members, right? So. So what, what I normally do or I tell my team is to focus on less, which, which means that uh, do not take everything which comes to your plate. So focus on what is achievable I, uh, rather than uh, taking everything and piling up the plate. So do that. The second thing I like to do is uh, keep a to-do list as Monica said. So we need to have a to-do list so that we, we know that what we are going to achieve for the day and then what at the end of the day recheck on our list and see which is done which is not done and take it to the next calendar day and make sure that you prioritize the to-do list so that you know what is priority and what is not priority because we do not want to give something which is of less prioritized work rather than keeping hold on the prioritized work so as as we we mature a day by day, uh, we we wanted to make sure that that is achieved so that there is no uh, showstoppers to our business. So in in our remote work, that is one thing which uh, need to be done. The, the reason behind I'm telling that is if we normally sit at office, uh, we know who is next to each other, and there will be helping hand. But now as we we are not in in that situation. We need to make sure that we utilize the knowledge what we have gained. <clears throat> that is one more thing which I normally tell my team. And the the next thing is embrace the constraints to make sure that you overcome that. Previously, we have some people who can help us. However, now you as a individual, you have to make sure that these negative stuffs do not overtake your strengths and discourage you more than you start working on it. So those things are the best things as Monica already said, please make sure that you attend the meetings which is required, which is not required. Make sure that you either tell, the, tell them saying that it is not your cup of tea or you're, you're not required and make sure that your presence is available there. The last thing which I normally do and tell my team is make sure that once in once in an hour and a half, take at least a five to 10 minutes break so that you, you do not sit in a place, engage yourself and overstress yourself, which is the common mistake which we normally do when we are doing a remote work, uh, sitting at a place, concentrating on our work and missing on stuff which is required to do at our what do you say at our intervals is one the second thing is when you take a break 
your 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 mind get refreshed and your new thoughts will come in so that people can rework on the same stuff again and again which we are doing in a better way so i normally say this to my team moni uh, uh, aishwarya back to you please thank you uh, that's a great point and uh, one thing uh, which i have seen like a lot of my team members uh, I've, i've been struggling is like um, how and where exactly we should draw a line like uh, what is the information that is required and what is the information i do not require right so the filtering is very very important with the data or the information that we receive so uh, sashi can you just throw some lights around that uh, you know your experience or what you have been doing to or you've been uh, giving uh, inputs to your team to filter the necessary information versus the overloaded information yeah sure sure yeah so as i said earlier right so when we when we ask our teams to do task which is do not take over step right so that is one thing which i tell them uh, every day in and out saying that you need to know what is that in your line of business which can be done so uh, so take each day uh, uh, for understanding what we are doing and how we are doing it so that is one thing which i will tell them saying that okay if i wanted to achieve saying that uh, i am not overloaded and i need to draw a line between my my capabilities and learning stuff so i will put by that self into two different directions right so one is a capability one is a learning path so i ca- i do not want to keep loading myself and keep learning many stuffs which sometimes over stress myself the reason is not everything is knowledge for me so we need to understand that so that is one thing which i will tell them and make sure that you know your strengths and prioritize it so that you can clearly say that this is my cup of tea and this is not my cup of tea as monica already said right in in the meetings you know what is that supposed to be happening and are you the, are you supposed to be there so you know it so that is one more, more one more line of business for me and then to try innovate stuff which can be done in a better way so that is once again <clears throat> will help will will help you motivate it and make sure that you you do not do something which is repeated in nature as, as the same way <clears throat> sorry uh, the other thing which i normally do is i keep a notepad at myself saying that whenever there is a work happening suddenly there will be an idea i keep note of it so that at the end of the day or when i take a break i just re- refresh them to say that is it valued now if i if i feel that it is valued i i go and do that so that everybody knows that what is your strength and what are you doing it and make sure that you either organize yourself at the start of the day or at the end of the day so that you know your to do list you accomplished what you missed what so that the next day you do not take something which is not in your priorities so and at the end of the day you make yourself summary saying that what have you achieved and what is that knowledge you gain so that it it actually keeps you in line with what we wanted to do and it will make sure that you progress in a better way so those things i i i i prefer to tell my team and i actually tell my team saying that this is how you can put a line in between your work and personal life so that your personal work as well as your career aspirations are not uh, taken in a different direction so that's that's from my side aishwarya um uh, thank you sashi i think you were quite uh, gone deep and summarized uh, well nicely uh, so we talk a lot about communication right and uh, now i would like to hear from a panel member uh, monica just to understand uh, what are the communication barriers uh, do, are there really communication barriers exist in remote working or is it something uh, that is uh, come up newly here or even in our day to day normal work at office so how do you see that right so um, that's a very interesting question mainly because uh, we're living in a world where everyone is just a text away or you can just meet anybody across the globe like it's everything becomes so easy these days right but could there still be something that is a barrier to good communication i think uh, 
Absolutely, yes. That's mainly because uh, all these things like voice, video calls, chat, all of these things are actually tools to communicate. Communication still is still a very personal and a very human thing. And these tools don't do a lot to help in its effectiveness. It helps you talk to the other person, yes. But are you able to convey what's in your mind correctly? That's still up to you. Uh, so yes, there is still a lot of barriers, I would say, uh, while working remotely. So for instance, um, remote working, uh, like um, Sashi mentioned in the beginning, right? And, uh, like the first couple of months we all enjoyed and then everyone's not sick of it. Because um, occasionally we all like to take off from office and just stay at home, relax and not commute. But uh, otherwise, not everyone really thrives in like a remote setup. Uh, it's very difficult to sort of work up that motivation each day when you're not really meeting your teammates. Uh, and you have to go through the grill of like you know every day's uh, tasks and everything and people might really struggle to uh, to act on what they need to do um, they might struggle to complete what they started because they they just don't have the team around to you know rally them uh, around the tasks that they need to do so unless someone looks out for these things very very carefully and uh, these problems are often left unspotted it's also very challenging to sort of create a space a safe space within the team where people can openly talk about these problems and everyone is report. Like, how comfortable would an average person on a team uh, feel saying that, hey, I am not able to contribute uh, to the best of my capabilities because, you know, this is not my style of working. You need to have a very high level of trust between the team for someone to open, about, uh, open up about these things. And that is something I feel it's, it's very challenging to achieve in a remote setup. Um, is one thing that I feel. Um, another thing that uh, I have experienced is the inability to sort of read uh, the person in front of you, their body language, uh, while they're talking or while you're in discussion. So uh, good communication or effective communication is basically a function of two things, right? Uh, it's the words that you choose and also the way you're conveying it, so your body language, your expressions the tone you use, all of that is equally important in good communication. And a lot of it is lost when you're doing it uh, over calls or over, even over a video call, right? It's not really the most effective way to do it. Um, so even there, and also now it's been a year, right? So it's very normal and very common that a team will have a bunch of people who've never really met each other before. So now when they come and introduce themselves to you or when you meet someone newly, you are introduced to like a very a very single dimension in them, which is just a, as a colleague. You don't know them on a personal level and it's very difficult to really form those connects on a personal level uh, when you're only talking about work during meetings. If you don't have a lot of uh, 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 chances to socialize, it becomes very difficult. And again, that goes back to uh, how it becomes difficult to build trust in a team and sort of bond with people. Uh, and that all sort of uh, eventually will start affecting the work that you do. Uh, so that is another thing that I feel. Uh, this is more on the on the way of communication or just bonding with people, uh, on, which is more difficult to address. But on the more simpler things, I feel um, one other problem that I have experienced on my teams is not being able to follow a routine or having unplanned availability for people. Right? I mean, now that they're working from home, we all know that there are a lot of distractions. There's someone at the door, you have, to, you have household chores, you have your house help coming in, so on and so forth. So people are not available all the time, and that's totally understandable. But then the, the other, the, everyone else needs to work around these unavailabilities. So that becomes a bit tricky, but it's also easy to solve. Uh, you just need to be transparent and uh, just sort of uh, like we maintain like an availability thread where everybody's like, hey, I'm going to be out between three and four today. So in case you needed to sort of have a call with them, you make sure you plan it either before or after that. So such things uh, sort of help. Um, and um, also, like I said, distractions, right? We have so many distractions these days. It's, when you're in office, it's, it's a lot more limited. Uh, these days you have family, you have, uh, you have your kids screaming around, you have, it's just a lot of things. And uh, handling all of that, I think, uh, does impact your ability to effectively be there for your team, that's definitely a problem. Uh, 
Yeah, thank you, Monica. That was uh, really wonderful. And uh, uh, one thing that I would like to, uh, you know, extend this question as we, you know, talk a lot about communication, right? Uh, what are the effective communication tools? We know that there is nothing like, you know, talking to a per in-person communication is always an effective and uh, we always wanted to have an in-person communication. But in this kind of a remote working, uh, do we have any effective communication tools, um, you know, that could be used during our discussions and make it more productive and uh, easily uh, understandable without any uh, miscommunications or misunderstanding or loss in the information, right? So what are the things that yeah. you are something that are falling in your office so uh, there are a ton of tools that we can choose from right now right uh, especially my personal favorite one for instance is uh, for whiteboarding mural is something that i was introduced to after lockdown i don't know if it was there before that but i'm like a huge fan of mural so any kind of communication meetings even for reports i'm now trying to use murals and sticky boards to communicate what I want to put out there to everyone. So that really helps. Uh, and in general, not just murals, that's just one of the tools. Uh, what I'm trying to say is whiteboarding and trying to do things in a visual way, right? Uh, and this is, again, not just post lockdown, even previous that we were all big fans of whiteboarding. Uh, so if you're in a call, just uh, share your screen and whatever it is that you're trying to explain, if you're able to draw it out or map it out, um, it helps communicate things much easily. Everyone's able to understand you uh, quicker and uh, chances of there being some kind of miscommunication or you saying something somebody interpreting it differently that really goes down and it also cuts down on your meeting time because you know like a picture speaks is equal to a thousand words they say right so instead of being very verbose and trying to just explain something if you just draw it draw something out you need you really need not be like an artist just some basic boxes and labels it really helps get the point across so any kind of a whiteboarding tool i think we must try to use it uh, and get the maximum benefit from it another thing that i follow is um, uh, you can use any tool for this again a simple word document or mural or whatever you please like a, a document that basically sort of anchors your meeting so uh, it's very naturally especially in remote meetings when you have so many people joining in it's uh, and you have so many distractions around you like we just discussed um, uh, it's not possible to stay clued in to what's going on especially if it's a long like a 30 minute or 60 minute meeting and discussing various points it becomes difficult for people to sort of stay zoned in or uh, clued into what's going on. It's very normal to sort of zone out. Um, so then how do you ensure that everybody is always on the same page? Uh, a very simple technique is to just use a document and share screen. And as in when, like if you are the facilitator, uh, then you would be doing it. Uh, just keep jotting down uh, important points that came up, uh, decision points or if there are multiple topics that need to be discussed, what topic are we on currently? Just sort of putting that on the screen. Uh, in case somebody had got distracted due to some reason, they still managed to come back to the conversation very easily because they see what's going on in front of them. Also, in, in case, let's say I say something and you misunderstood it. Uh, when I'm typing it down, it's very easy for you to see that and instantly sort of correct. Oh, that's not what I meant or that's not what you meant or, you know. It's very easy to catch mistakes very early if you're just trying to jot down things. And of course, uh, if there is a need to send uh, MOM minutes of meeting post the meeting, this document, you just sort of send it over. You don't really need to spend additional time creating these minutes, right? It's, it's all there, you just send it across. So it saves you time even after the meeting. That also has really helped in, um, in my experience. Um, emails is another thing, right? Um, it's an age old thing, everyone sends out emails, but how do you do it effectively? Uh, keep your emails short and crisp, uh, get to the point. If you're trying to ask someone to do something, um, just get to the point directly. You don't want them to read through paragraphs of things and then try to fish out, okay, what am I trying to um, understand from this mail? So uh, make the subject line really intuitive, uh, make the content, uh, write the content in such a way that in case you wanna search for that email, let's say a few months later, it's easy to find it. So use words that are more commonly used and uh, such thing, it really helps. And of course, uh, uh, yeah, just trying to be as concise and precise in your mail helps. And not just in your mails, in any form of communication, even, even if you're putting a chat message in a chat room, try to make it as crisp as possible. Um, try to make it uh, searchable, uh, all of that. And don't try to spam things. Or, if you're creating chat rooms, that's another tool that can be used very effectively. 
um, chat rooms and everything. We were doing this even before lockdown, but even after that, uh, these days also, uh, try to arrive at that right number of rooms to have. You don't want too many, you don't want too less. You need to have the right forums to express whatever needs to be spoken about. So just always being mindful about these things really goes a long way in keeping the team focused on what we need to do. Uh, that's a brilliant uh, sum up, Monica, from your side. I think I uh, uh, touched upon all the important areas like, you know, how to keep things very simple and also uh, the use of, uh, you know, jotting down the points during the meeting. That's a very great point because you need not spend additional time and energy in you know, coming up with an MOM. That's a very good point. So now uh, let's come to the final question of this panel. And uh, it's going to be a very important question um, also. Is information overload affects the mental well-being? So let's hear from uh, Sashi. Uh, what do you think about that, uh, Sashi? Uh, it's one of the, what do you say, important questions, what we have to answer before we take them, right? Yes, it does. Uh, because, so, when we st when we get more work so we get anxious which in turn increases the stress to perform and it, it actually goes beyond that and it affects your feelings you're, you're overwhelmed saying that i have been overloaded so it is it is predominantly uh, we need to know how to say no so that will help us uh, uh, in in making our personal what do you say uh, 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 mental well-being to be instable is one so, sorry uh, uh, okay uh, that is one uh, the second thing i i like to do is uh, uh, to tell it is uh, so when we are doing this remote and uh, it affects our uh, mindfulness uh, and it makes ourselves powerless saying that we are unable to take a decision which was easy when we are at a, a, a workplace the reason is we just turn back to each other we face to face we we actually interact our physical and mental body stress is actually relaxed so however in in the current situation it is not happening it it actually affects our health our 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 physical as well as mental pressures are increasing which in turn affects our uh, uh, well-being uh, when we are dealing with too much of information uh, it it actually uh, uh, brings you more and more uh, uh, what do you say uh, uh, stress when compared uh, and make sure that uh, we are not performing so that is that is actually happening in 90 percent of the case only 10 person who who knows how to say no so this is the first thing which i learned uh, setting that do not take everything so we need to say no to some places but make sure that your no is having an answer to it which will resolve our well-being so that's 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 the points of point us from me uh, aishwarya uh, thank you, Sashi. Uh, I would also agree with you. Uh, like, you know, it really affects the mental well-being and sometimes you feel demotivated. And and I also uh, feel that, you know, uh, this remote working and too many attending meetings and these things have, have a potentially caused impact of our personal communication. So do you think at the end of the day, uh, you know, overall it affects your personal communication? which means with your friends, your families, or because we always focus only with the colleagues and normal uh, work life is missing. So do you think uh, that is still uh, people are uh, undergoing through this? What's the view about it? Yes, 100%. So so as, as we started, right? So when we started to get work from home, uh, so it is in last year, March, uh, in Chennai at least, I know it is from 20th March, 2020. So at that point of time, our kiddos were not having school. So we were happily working on So when June came in or July came in, when they also started work uh, attending online classes. And so we have to share the same, uh, what do you say, a uh, 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 room or, or network. So it started increasing the pressure for both of us. And then uh, as you rightly said, right? So 
when we are not meeting people when we are only doing work uh, the stress is given to our family members or to our subordinates who just ask for a simple question so in turn which will which increased the gap between our bonds which was there when we are in a, in a closed environment so that 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 bonding is slightly decreased as well the the career goal what we had in our mind now because of these challenges of working extra hours working uh, what do you say uh, extra hours is one overloaded information so we are unable to process that and when it comes to our career goals we are missing so initially when i said right so i have done some certifications for the last one and a half years i have not done certifications that that is an example for me saying that i need to do something which increases my capabilities which is reduced because of the overworld over info overloaded information and extra long hours work because now everybody is not traveling at least for me i used to travel one hour to office and coming back one hour so two hours of travel is reduced so where am i spending it is once again spent on my work so those things are increased my pressure and the career goals and my aspirations are reduced when i compared to when i was there in a workplace environment yes to 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 you answer your question yes it's 100% impact the personal communication aishwarya thank you sashi and uh, so now let's come to the end of the panel discussion today and uh, i would like to summarize and some of the key takeaways what i understand from the that discussion over this 45 minutes so it was a great thought from you uh, both uh, both monica and sashi uh, to summarize uh, what i've learned is we should always try and keep things very simple clear and thoughtful and also when consuming the information at the same time sharing the information so we should keep this as a ground rules simple clear and thoughtful right by following these ground rules i think we can definitely avoid um, information overload so there's a saying that end of the day information overload is a symptom of our desire to not focus on what's important oh it's a choice so let's make a wise choice uh, i i should say that okay uh, so now let's move on to q and a uh, session if we have any questions from the audience uh, we can take up the questions uh, from the chat window yeah there were some questions uh so in the chat window uh, i answered some but uh, let let's let's rephrase them again aishwarya you want to go through them um yes i'm okay okay there was one question from indarjeet uh, if i pronounce his name correctly sorry uh, what can we do when the project manager wants to work on a on non performing engineer assigning multiple task parallelly so that was one of the question so yeah you want to uh, answer no sachi you can go ahead please yeah i have already answered it so what i see this is how i work so when when somebody is not performing and when some uh, and when the management or a project manager ask us to uh, give more work so that they are also uh, they are also uh, in task so what i normally do is a i know my perf- my my team's performance or that person's performance so i normally select tasks initially so i will not every day right so give them the task which can be easily achieved and their motivation goes up because when you keep giving something which is not capable of their motivation goes down and their non performance still goes bad so normally i do that secondly some task which i still assign which is of higher caliber but i make sure that i keep track of it what i have given and also have a checkpoint with that person saying that how are they doing what is that help we wanted or he wanted so that i keep them involved and make sure that they understand what is that they are doing so that their caliber also increases this is the way i normally do it with my team is that answers your question interjit 
Does it make sense? Um, yeah, and adding to Sashi, one more thing I would try to uh, understand is why is their performance taking a hit in the first place? So let's say you are another member on the team, try to establish that, that comfort level of that person so they're able to even talk about what is, uh, so nobody wants to do badly, right? Nobody is uh, joining your team to not contribute. So there must be, maybe is there something going on in their personal uh, life? Is, is their head suffering due to whatever reasons? Are they being given work that is out of their comfort zone? See, understanding what is your uh, that goes a long way in then trying to rectify it also. So, yeah. And giving feedback also helps. Like sometimes people may not realize that what they're doing is not up to the mark and that it's probably impacting the team's deliverable. So also giving a feedback and making them aware of what is what is the expectation that you have of them, uh, what is what is it that their role is supposed to do, uh, that also really helps a lot. Any other questions from the audience? Uh, there, there was is one, one question. Yeah, sorry, go, go, ahead, Monica. go ahead, go ahead, Monica. Go ahead, Monica, please. There was one question about uh, health issues, right? Having to sit in a particular posture for long hours. And um, yes, in cases where uh, Bluetooth headphones are not allowed, I, I honestly don't have a solution. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> but uh, one thing that I do is um, a lot of the calls, uh, especially in the evenings, uh, I try to take them, let's say, on a walk. If I'm not expected to share screen or something, I just uh, connect via my phone. And so I'm walking and, and at the same time also walking. So that helps me sort of go out and about, get some fresh air. Uh, maybe just walking on the terrace or just just outside your building or whatever so just trying to not be sitting in one place the whole day i think uh, that has helped me personally to just uh, refresh myself and all of that. so uh, i i i will add one more point uh, monica to that right so one yes as you said uh, uh go for a walk and take a call the second thing is when you feel that uh, your interaction is not much required when you, when you need to talk to a certain time you know your timing at that point of time i normally <clears throat> don't put my headsets when i'm taking calls or when i'm meeting when i'm in a meeting i normally put my i have a laptop so i put my la office laptop in speaker mode i i actually keep circling in be between my laptop so that I do not sit for a long. This the second thing is my eyesight are not only stuck, stuck to my screen. I because I know that it is not much of a work for me. So I just keep roaming around. And when it comes to my pointers to be discussed, then I switch to my headsets. Otherwise, normally it will be on heads in, in, in speaker mode. So that's how I normally do not uh, sit or focus on only my screen. Still, I use my head, uh, glasses, so that's a different story. So, what? Make sure that you do not concentrate in your screen for the 24 bar seven. So that's how yes. I normally do it. Yes. Um, maybe just to add to that, uh, this might sound funny, but what I have started to do is after the initial one two months, I started to multitask. So when I'm on a call and if I'm not required to type anything or share my screen, like I said, if I only need to talk then that's only occupying my mind, right? At the same time, I could also take care of some household chores. Like let's say, I'm, you know, uh, it might sound silly, but let's say folding clothes on the side or uh, such things, it can kind of, it kind of breaks the routine. It kind of breaks the monotony. You're not always looking at the screen. You're always not so focused into your laptop. You're also looking out there. You're doing other things at the same time. So even multitasking and using your time effectively, uh, that goes a long way in sort of staying stress-free and uh, not letting this whole remote thing impact you a lot. Uh, I, I like to add one question. So which was Deepak's question? So his question is like being a scrum master role. If you are if your technician, uh, sorry, leadership is asking you to learn technical aspects as well. How do you see this? I try to make them understand. But OK, uh, first thing uh, I like to add here is any learning is not going to go for a waste. So that's the first thing which we need to make, keep it in our mind. So it can be technical, it can be non-technical. Please make sure that it is a knowledge for you, right? So 
in in my organization at least so we have come up with saying that there is not going to be a single skilled person so we have a t shape skill so when we say t shape skill one you will be core deep into it which is your strongest area but still we need to have multiple knowledge so that as a scrum master giving the same example right so if you are in a in in a in a environment where two or three different apps are used so we need to understand those apps so at least for that we need to know them not in depth but to a basic extent right so for so giving this um, giving my example so i am a kanban trainer i am a kanban certified professional but i learned scrum the reason is so scrum and kanban doesn't go hand in hand it is two different entity but now we are calling them as a scrumban so i need to know what is scrum so that is how so in so it is not technical but i know what is basics out of it so that is how i feel when you are asked to do something when you are asked to learn something do not have a, a, a mindset saying that it is not going to help me no and i think like that it will help you in one point of time so put it in a positive way and put yourself saying that okay that is a learning for me and that's a knowledge for me put put yourself in that hat it will all work to you if we put a negative saying that it is nothing to do with me or my role so it is not going to work for you so put put yourself in that positive hat or positive thoughts so it will 100% help you in one day and in in current situations so there is nobody will have a single skill will be taken for a work so you have to have a multiple skills so that's that's the learning for me and that's how we have been trying our teams also to do it so that's the point for me aishwarya monica and we just add that to it please yeah so uh, i've been learning these other technical uh, the technical aspects of your project right it's not even something that might come in handy in the future what i have experienced is my very first project right was a highly technical one uh, when i just joined my current organization it was super technical there was hardly any user interface and the first few months everything was pretty fuzzy for me because i was playing the role of like a business analyst and an iteration manager but i wasn't able to really understand the work that the that the team was doing and but then i was forced to learn that and what i have experienced is that it's not just something that help will help me sometime in the future it helps me play my current role much better i am able to understand the roadblock the team is facing i am able to understand the language the team is talking um it helps me plan the sprints better it helps me understand dependencies better so always sort of understanding the other nuances of uh, of what the team is working on helps you be a better scrum master or better iteration manager so yeah i would say do go out there and give it a shot um if you still feel it is not aligned with your long term goals if you still feel it's not going to help you uh then i think maybe even having a word with your manager being more uh, assertive about what it is that you really want to do in the long run and how this is not helping you in any which way might also help thank you uh, monica and sashi and, and thanks for all the uh, questions from the audience as well yeah over to you shreya yes we are a little over time and uh, thank you so much everybody for a wonderful panel discussion it was really very interesting thank you for your valuable contribution thank you it thank you shreya shreya and prakash hi monica yes. Bye team. Thank you all the audience for taking out your time and attending. Thank you. Thanks.